Sonia, and thanks so much for being part of the jury on the theater photography grant this year and for speaking to me. Um, given the context of uh, your project, uh, which is the critical dictionary of Southeast Asia, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you um, think archives and also think of archives because the project uh, you use archives for as the basis of your work uh, in the project, but also you're building an archive in a way. Yeah, thank you for the question. I mean, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be part of the ride. And uh, yeah, going back to the critical dictionary of Southeast Asia, <clears throat> maybe I will begin by maybe briefly introducing the project a little bit for those who are unfamiliar with it. So I would say the project began um, with a question um, and the question being, you know, uh, relatively kind of like straightforward one, which is what is Southeast Asia? Uh, and Southeast Asia is a region which, is, which has never been unified by a single political system, uh, a religion or language. So what makes Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asia? That's another way of like phrasing it. So with that in mind, you know, we can think about the project itself as an attempt to, to mobilize kind of like existing um, materials in order to um, produce a new version of uh, a new possible uh, versions of what Southeast Asia might be. So these existing uh, materials that we have mobilized uh, include the sort of concepts that are created by other authors think, thinking the question of what is Southeast Asia. It also uh, includes Audio, audiovisual materials that can be found uh, online. So um, the first part of the Critical Dictionary of Southeast Asia, um, it includes actually a platform where these audiovisual materials related to the question of Southeast Asia has been collected. And then there is also an algorithm which was produced uh, together with my collaborators, which edits these existing uh, audiovisual materials according to some of the concepts proposed by um, other writers and thinkers. So, you know, for me, the dictionary is an archive of sorts, but it is an archive that is dynamic. It's an archive that is something uh, that is in constant, that is in a constant state of transformation. So in that sense, I think, you know, it's also close to a dictionary. Like, you know, I would think about a dictionary as a, as a tool, as something which is uh, at hand that is often deployed and, uh, and uh, mobilized, you know. So I would say, um, yeah, the dictionary project for me in, indeed falls in between a dictionary and an archive. But it would be great if you could talk a little bit how you um, articulate what performance means for you. Sure, thank you for that uh, question. Yeah, I would say for me, what interests me when I hear the word performance, what I, I think what I think about is something closer to performativity than the performance itself, you know. So if we think, if we only think about the word performance, sometimes I think the image that comes to our mind might be sort of the performance of an individual or individual body, you know. But I think performativity for me is much more a kind of a, a, a mode of being, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Maybe it's uh, something related to how we can think about the difference between what is theater and theatricality, which also happens to be what interests me, theatricality above uh, the theater. You know, so 
Um, well, I mean, bringing the question back to the dictionary, it's interesting to think about performativity in within the dictionary projects. So this is a uh, performative the, the performative element within this work is produced entirely by the algorithms that we have created. And with these algorithms that determine the editing of this uh, work, um, it, what it means is that when we operate only at the level of the algorithms, we, we can't determine how each sequence of image is going to look exactly, you know, so the individual, it's impossible for us to control sort of the individual and any individual instance of the work. Rather, what we have to think about is something um, broader, something which I would kind of describe as, a, as an aggregate, mm. you know, so we are thinking in terms of these uh, large aggregates. So we construct um, the algorithms in order to orchestrate or to choreograph these like larger kind of like collections of like aggregates of sound and image and concepts. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you to speak a little bit? You just brought up your interest in theatricality and it would be great to hear you speak a bit about that. Sure, yeah, that's always a tough, tough <laughs> one to, to, to speak about, as you surely know. You yeah. Know. yeah. Um, well, I would say I understand theatricality. Maybe, yeah, I could try to kind of like frame it in a very um, direct uh, way, which is for me, theatricality is a certain awareness of being seen. <laughs> You know, so mm -hmm. sometimes we, we might describe someone as behaving theatrically, you know, because uh, uh, this person um, could be uh, very conscious of being watched or observed, you know. And um, for me, it's also a kind of uh, acknowledgement and recognition of the audience to be that the audience who is spending this like amount of time um, to engage with the work that I have done. So for me, you know, theatricality can be reduced to that very basic kind of like awareness. And, but that awareness, you know, it, for me, it kind of like creates a, a kind of a loop. We could describe it as a kind of a feedback loop, right? Like this, that, awareness that while I'm performing a particular action, I'm being seen by someone else. Mm -hmm. And that awareness of being seen changes how I perform mm -hmm. this act, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, theatricality could be, yeah, described as that. You've made theater works for the dictionary um, for the dictionary project and it would sure. be uh, good to hear you talk about um, reference those or one of them uh, in the context of thinking about performance because this is meant to be viewed live but also I guess has then um, a place online um, and therefore what is placed online um, in relationship to what has been uh, performed live would be, you know, and how do you think through that would be good to hear. Sure. Yeah, I, I would say that, um, yeah, something which unfolds purely online, uh, I mean, in comparison to a, to a performance which is taking place, I think, at a phenomenological level, there's definitely like kind of a big like mm -hmm. uh, difference in how we experience these modes. Um, but I would say for me, you know, what is interesting is to is to is also to 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 maybe to bracket the phenomenological for a while, and to attempt to do 
a, a certain kind of like performative work uh, online, which is as close to a performance. Uh, I think it's interesting for us to consider how close in a structural sense, we can create a work online, which is performative in the same way as a performance in the flesh. So just to, again, go back to the concrete example of the Critical Dictionary of Southeast Asia. So if we go onto the websites um, to view the film, uh, we would have a sense that this film is actually composed in real time by a set of um, algorithms. And these algorithms are also um, selecting uh, from a range of different possible voiceovers to combine with these um, images that it is selecting. So everything kind of unfolds and takes place um, in the uncertainty of the now, you know, uh, of the present moment. For me, structurally, it's not that different from a performance um, in the flesh. Yeah, thank you for having me uh, as on part of the, as on the journey for the uh, selection of these uh, grants, you know. My it's pleasure, been really, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah. It's been a real, real pleasure for me to, to look at the, the range of works being um, selected. Um, yeah, just to see, you know, these kind of like new ideas and how people are stretching the form of both uh, of, of photography, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, I think when I think about the word theater, it suggests a performative act kind of that is carried out in real time, you know, so it, it suggests um, an act which is charged with the plenitude of the presence, you know, whereas uh, when I think about the word photography, it seems almost uh, uh, in, in contrast to theater, photography makes me think about traces, uh, traces as in records of the past, kind of uh, uh, this temporal, temporal process, you know, like this gap, right, which uh, allows for like memory and uh, history. Yeah. So I think what is uh, fantastic about this grant and its name is that it brings these two opposite words like together. So you have a theater photography grant. So I think this combination of um, these uh, opposite terms already generates a space for us to imagine a third possible term. Uh, this third possible term for me being a, a synthesis, an, an open synthesis, and that openness is possibility. So ultimately, this is what I consider um, this grant to be. It's a grant in service of what is still possible with photography. There is a clear necessity for grants to support innovative creative work in India. Thanks to the Al Kazi Theatre Archives Theatre Photography Grant this year, I had the opportunity to witness the enlargening of the idea of what photography can do in the realm of theatre. This grant encourages projects where theatrical modes leak into the very structure of photographic veracity. This grant will allow the possibilities of photographic reproducibility to grapple with the obdurate materiality of bodies, whether that of a river or that of a human. This is an exciting moment.